This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All one place. The California PUC caught a big wave this past week when on Tuesday, October 9th, they issued draft comments and recommendations for MLTS legislation in the state of California. That story's coming up right here on the E911 Talk podcast. Episode 109, recorded Friday, October 12th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. Now here's Fletch. In 2010, the California Public Utilities Commission, or CPUC, started an initiative regarding potential legislation on E911 services as provided by MLTS PBX systems. A workshop was held during that summer, a subsequent report was issued, and on Tuesday, October 9, 2012, a draft report was published on the CPUC website. That report is public information, and I've included a link on my blog at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. Those that are a party to the proceeding have until October 29th to file comments on this draft version with an additional five days for reply comments. In section 2.3, the CPUC identifies that as of 2007, 15 million Californians are employed by private businesses, nonprofits, and government with millions of others routinely visiting those facilities. They also state that on any given day, there are an additional 1 million tourists that visit those establishments, as well as attractions and shopping centers. They note that businesses represent about 40% of the switched access lines in California, and that most of those lines were multi-line. During the proceedings, Avaya estimated that potentially 70% of all PBX MLTS systems within the state were not provisioned properly for E911 services. And it came out that those numbers were consistent with AT&T California's report. Currently, E911 provisioning in PBXs is completely voluntary in the state. And California PSAPs provided the commission with evidence that this voluntary approach is just not working as they continue to experience inaccurate caller location from PBX MLTS systems. Now, when any state starts a proceeding to potentially enact new legislation, one of the primary concerns is the financial impact of that legislation on constituents. When the data was reviewed for California, it was noted that approximately 95% of California businesses would actually fall into the smaller business category as defined by the NINA model legislation. This indicates that only the remaining 5%, which would be large businesses, would be affected by the legislation. However, that accounts for 9,521,366 Californians, or about 60.5% of the California workforce. Therefore, the NINA model legislation reasonably extends critical emergency services protection that would ultimately save countless lives of Californians and tourists. The report continues to outline the various actions that have been taken over the past few years, including steps to increase public awareness of the problem. It was decided that a common logo would be beneficial to all vendors, manufacturers, and service providers, and could be displayed on their individual web pages, linking back to a common CPUC web page that would maintain information for consumers and system administrators. A generic vendor agnostic logo was developed by Red Sky Technologies and provided to the CPUC. And Avaya contributed cover graphics for the brochure that was developed by the subcommittee. These educational materials will be made available once this proceeding is finalized. Now the draft order is presented consists of the following. The CPUC's communication division shall take all reasonable actions towards leadership and in raising awareness. Number two. The CPUC's Governmental Affairs and Communications Division shall take all reasonable actions to further the adoption of effective legislation requiring PBX MLTS location reporting. Number three, within 60 days, all local exchange carriers and other parties are strongly encouraged to distribute the customer advisory brochure to their current and prospective customers. Number four, Within 90 days, local exchange carriers shall review and update their 911 tariffs so that customers are fully informed of options for provisioning accurate caller location. Number five, within 90 days, AT&T California must file a tariff, including cost justification for its informed 911 service. And finally, number six, rulemaking 10-4-11 is closed. 
Now, although it took a few years and there were some political challenges along the way, in the end, the CPUC, Nina, APCO, CalNina, as well as the players in the industry all came together to provide a workable solution that will not be a negative cost impact to businesses while providing support and incentive for a very serious problem that affects 10 to 12% of this nation's 911 callers. Now, should this decision be accepted, and I would hope that it would, the legislation process can begin and work on the actual verbiage for the state of California can commence. Now, one of the other winners behind all of these actions, which was only briefly mentioned, is Nina. As chairperson for the MLTS Technical Subcommittee, I have always said that because we went out of our way to include representatives from the user groups, specifically Derek Lanham and Maria McCulloch, the work product that we produced made sense and was actionable. This is one of the many hidden benefits that the IAUG brings forth, and I'm proud to say that IAUG was the only user group to step forward, even though all were asked. And don't forget that this Thursday, October 18th, in Nashville, Tennessee, Level 3 will be hosting the IAUG group, where I'll be presenting with Lynn Questel of the Tennessee Emergency Services Board, providing users an update with the next generation 911 network that's happening in Tennessee. You can follow me on Twitter at Fletch911, where we'll be posting the details. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN.